It was fantastic. Today we made the first delivery uh, to uh, a hospital here in Rwanda, I think anywhere in the world. And uh, we also made the first delivery of blood by a drone anywhere in the world. So, uh, so far so good. We're going to be, we basically, starting today, the system is now operational. And so we'll be doing operational flights, um, starting with just a few hospitals and then expanding to 21 hospitals across the western half of Rwanda uh, over the next month. It's fantastic. Uh, I understand you're also uh, planning some pilots in uh, the U.S. Yeah, uh, you know, it's funny. I think a lot of people often think that countries in Africa are playing catch up to countries like the U.S., but this is an instance where the U.S. is, well, moving a little slow, shall we say, from a regulatory perspective. And actually, the White House looked at the work that Rwanda was doing in terms of showing how drones can save lives and, and approached us and said that they wanted us to do the same thing in the U.S., yeah, can you, uh, I read somewhere just how serious a problem postpartum hemorrhage is uh, in Rwanda. Can you talk a little bit about that just so people understand the scale of the problem? Sure, and, and one of the most important things I can emphasize is it's not just Rwanda. This is actually a problem everywhere in the world, including in the U.S. But to use Rwanda as an example, uh, Rwanda delivers 65,000 units of blood a year. 50% of that is being used for moms who are suffering from postpartum hemorrhaging. And then 30% is going toward children under the age of five who are suffering from severe anemia due to malaria. So 80% of the blood that you're delivering is urgently needed and saving a life. And yet it's very expensive and hard to stock and it has a very short shelf life. So you can't stock a lot of blood ahead of time using a car or a motorcycle.